Hey guys, welcome to episode three, where we will be talking about the origami octopus. Now, this octopus is actually a traditional model, and it's fairly simple, not too complicated, but what makes it special is that you curve the legs so that they kind of twist and turn in every direction. It makes it look much more realistic, a lot more fun. And also the paper that I like to use is called Color Harmony Paper, and this paper has a gradient, so you see the top is really pale, and then the tips of the arms are dark. So I really like the way that looks. In nature, an octopus can actually be a variety of different colors and it can even change colors. So using this paper makes it a lot more, a lot more fun and colorful and bright. And I like that, especially for the ocean mobiles because I use creatures in all different colors. So for the octopus, I can use orange, I can use green, and here's a little mini version. Even though this model is a traditional model, it deviates from tradition because we use scissors. This guy would only have four legs, but because we use scissors to cut each of the legs in half, that's how he gets eight. So when I first started folding the origami octopus, it would look like this, okay? Nothing too spectacular. But now, that's how it turns out when you curve all the legs and stuff, so it looks a lot neater, a lot more realistic. There are a lot of origami octopus models out there. Now the one that I'll be showing you today is actually kind of on the simpler side and this model, even though it's simple, it takes longer to curve the legs than it takes to fold it. Most of the other octopus models are much more complex, so much more detailed. They'll have the eyes, they'll have like suction cups on the bottoms of the arms. They're amazing, they're gorgeous, but they'll take like five hours to fold, probably more than five hours. And that's more time than I can put into folding a model because I have a mobile with 18 different sea creatures. I can't spend five hours on every single one. Otherwise, it's gonna take me a week. The best paper to use for the origami octopus is origami paper, something that's really thin. Because if you use thicker paper, it'll bunch up when you get to those leg folds and then you won't be able to create the curves that you need. And I've actually had a lot of people ask me about the octopus, like how do you fold it, how do you do that, it looks so neat, and so I'm excited to tell you guys about this model and how to make it. So we begin with a sheet of paper that is a color harmony sheet, at least that's my favorite type of paper to use, and you want to start with a frog base. So you want to fold your paper in half, Always remember to line up the edges. You don't want to have white sticking out or overlap too far and have the white show on the other side. So make sure that you always line up the edges really well. Then you pinch at the center, flip it over. Once again, line it up, pinch at the center, and then crease with your nails. Open it up, fold it the other way. So now we have a square base. And to create a frog base, we have to squash fold, make sure this line, this crease here, lines up to this space. And you do that all four sides.
Now we want to fold all the edges to the center. And you repeat that on all four sides. Now you want to petal fold. So you open it up and you fold this up and fold these down and you're going to create this little petal right here. And you do that on all four sides. Now we want to narrow the, the arms a little bit more. So you want to fold in one more time to the center. And just like we did with the paper crane, you don't want to fold it all the way to the center. You do want to leave a little bitty space right there between the edge and the center. And do the same thing also on all four sides. Notice I didn't fold all the way to the center, otherwise the paper is going to bunch up when you try to open up the arms. Now you have your completed frog base. So now you'll notice that we have four distinct legs. One, two, three, four. And we need to turn these four into eight, so we actually have to cut. So if you see one leg here, if you open up this leg, you are supposed to cut down the center of the leg right here. And if you do that the way it is right now, you'll actually cut some of this colored paper off and you don't want to do that. So what I like to do is I actually unfold the step we just finished. And the reason you want to do this in this order is that if you cut it first and then try to do that fold we just did, 
you actually end up, um, the paper gets all crooked. So now that we've opened it up, it's easier to cut. Now you see the paper here in the center still overlaps a little bit, sometimes more than other times. So when you cut, you want to cut along the center crease, but try not to cut this colored edge right here. So now let's cut the leg into two legs. You can fold this up so you know how far to cut. And then we can flip it over and you want to start on the underside of the leg and you can bend it back. My favorite tool to use are these little tiny scissors that come on the Swiss Army knife, but you can use ordinary scissors too. I like to use really small scissors for this. So you bend it back and you start following along the crease. Try not to cut this colored paper here. And then once you've gotten started, you can flip it over and be careful not to cut this paper here that you can't see. And it's easier to follow the, the line of the crease from this side. And you can cut it as far as about a millimeter up beyond that line. And you want to do that to all four sides. Once you've cut all the legs, you can fold that last fold back into position. So now instead of four arms, we have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now the next step is how we shape the legs. And I like to use the screwdriver because of the handle, but you can use like a bamboo skewer, something very small, narrow, it has to be cylindrical and smooth. You don't want anything that's rough and bumpy. So you start by, you can fold an arm up, make sure you crease it so it stays in that position. And I tend to kind of just follow the way the paper feels. Like sometimes you'll start curving it one way and then all of a sudden you feel like the paper's resisting too much so you change the direction of the curl. So you run the tool, whatever it is, on the underside. And then I start feeling some resistance, like the paper wants to puff up and bunch. So then I change the direction. So instead of curling that way, I curl up instead for the second half of the arm. So then the arm will be going up and then down. And then sometimes if I want it to stay up really high, 
you can put glue right here, put that up, and then use a paper clip or a little binder clip right here. And it'll hold the arm in that position. And you want to do this to all eight arms.
So typically what I like to do is I like to have four arms going up and then four going down. And I just kind of stagger them. I don't put them, you know, one after another. In this case, I did this every other. So I did up, down, up, down, up. And then I did two ups in a row right here. And then two downs in a row. Sometimes before I inflate it, I like to put a little bit of glue down here between the arms because I don't want them to rip when I inflate it. Sometimes right here, you'll see. It just it looks like it might tear right there. So I like to put a little tiny bit of glue there and I'll put binder clips on the sides to hold it together until it dries. Now be careful not to put too much glue because then your body will not inflate. Once the legs are all shaped and your octopus is ready to go, that's when you want to inflate it. And that's how it will look. To inflate it, you put your finger over here and you push all the tentacles out of the way. Sometimes that can be a challenge. And then you blow right into the opening right there. It's a very quick, short breath. I will show you what you do on this one here. So you kind of push all the legs away, and then you put your finger on the back end over here. And there you go. I really hope you guys liked today's episode all about the octopus, and I hope that you will hit like and that you'll subscribe so you don't miss next week's episode. And thank you so much for being here. If you have an octopus model or any other model that you want to see me fold, make sure to comment below and tell me about it and let me know which one it is and maybe I'll review it in the future. Also, if you have any questions in general about the show or about my work, let me know. And I'd love to hear from you guys and I'll see you next week. Bye. I have had several people ask me, really? going so well because that paper has like a, so the legs are like in all different directions and in this model when you fold the arms the paper is going to get really bunched up Sylvie get away from the camera you you can't touch the camera you make it shake you want to be in my video huh? Sylvie, Sylvie, Sylvie Pie, get away from the camera. Sylvie, Sylvie, Sylvie Pie, get away from the camera. Get away, get away. Thank you very much.